Good morning. I'm Michelle Manat. I am the president of the James Renwick Alliance. Today's symposium is part of a celebration of American craft that we call Spring Craft Weekend. The stars of this weekend for us are the five artists who will receive our Masters of the Medium Award. Our masters come from all over the United States. The Masters of the Medium Award is given biannually to an artist in each of the five craft materials who has influenced their medium, who has demonstrated craftsmanship, and has contributed significantly to the craft field. In three words, who are passionate about craft. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank the Alliance for all the great work they do and the support and advocacy for over the years. Uh, and I'm delighted to also be here in the company of so many masters. I felt like I was in that generation where questioning was the height of importance, kind of ask, putting a critical perspective on the work that we do. And uh, I, I often asked myself, what is the role of this process, of this discipline, of the objects that are the outcomes of our creative practice. Another thing on, on inspection object like this, you can see the silver solder that defines the construction of the piece, and it belies the sense of it as a cast object. So I personally really enjoy the authority that I have as a maker to use construction um, as evidence of the thought process in a body of work. Um, the reveal and um, the play that is our opportunity as master craftsmen. I was thinking of the incidence of the, the mark itself as ideological. And it's kind of like a craft propaganda idea. It's like a, a, uh, a revision of the arts and crafts revision uh, in conversation with the commercial interpretation that still pervades you know, home goods catalogs and so forth the industrial hand-wrought hammer mark. Um. Oh, well, I just want to thank uh, the James Renwick Alliance for uh, honoring me with this, and I feel like I'm in an incredible company with my fellow artists, and uh, awesome work, by the way. It was great. Um, so often, I live in the mountains of North Carolina, and it's had, uh, it reflects the kind of life I had as a young person where I felt like when I discovered clay in high school, there was this vast opening thing that I could work out the rest of my life and never really discover what was out there. There's a the little saying, as an acorn is to the oak, so are we. And so um, I really feel like that's uh, how my life has sort of been, is the sense of being a seed and, and coming and unfolding. My father raced motorcycles, as my brother would love to say, and, but he was an inventor and a, a tool maker. Um, I grew up in this machine shop. Really was a, um, an underpinning and making a living. I mean, being an entrepreneur as an artist, that's a big part of my life was, how do I survive? And, and being able to use your talent as at the edge of your art and still make a living. That was, that was always that little moment. So I don't teach, I don't have a university degree. Uh, I'm, I'm a practicing artist from, a, you know, from the age of 18 or 19 years old. But the White House bottles, that was, a, you know, one of my favorite stories is the fact that I had shown at a, sh a show with this work and had great success at this show and took this new work and I didn't sell one piece, <laughs> not one piece. And then I came to Baltimore, the economy had done a uh, downturn and I was at Baltimore and Michael Monroe walks by and Michael says, Michael, I've got something going on, I'd like those bottles for that. And that's the White House collection right there. <laughs> and so it, it was a real important moment for me because it taught me that my, it's not that my, um, work was wrong, but sometimes I had to realize that my audience was not necessarily where I lived, and it was broader than that. So this, this big door here is uh, my new studio. So I I'd worked for a long time in a house I built in the studio, and um, about 22 years ago, we built this big studio, 
And so the natural world really came inside the door. And this is this is a great connection to the Smithsonian. When I was 18 or 19, I came to see at the East Wing of the National the big cutout show of Matisse's. And I left there with this impression of chewing the cud. I was, why, why was that interesting? And, and it's been an echo in my life uh, for a long time, just a connection. And then Florida Lee, tool maker. And I started a company on the side called Mud Tools. And uh, that's been good for our family. Uh, it's leveled out my life and my income and allowed me to spend more time making more serious work. And this is, I just finished this at Star. If you don't know about Star, it's in North Carolina. Uh, every year they do fire fest. So this is about a seven foot tall piece that they fire and then open the kiln and we're pumping sawdust into it. That's what we're doing. So I'm a 64-year-old man having the time of my life like I was 12. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there are three, three groups of inspiration. Um, first one is materials. And then it, it has, kind of, in retrospect, I realize it's become a really important directive for me that continues. I like that, I like that challenge and the, and the boundaries of um, using the actual structure to help define the form. These are shots of a residency I did in the Dominican Republic in 85. And um, this was the kind of a pivotal piece for me that I did there. Um, it's where, when and where I realized that I was interested in making a kind of a portrait of a time and a place and incorporated everything that I knew about that place. Um. My medium is quilt making. I love machine piecing. I love the engineering of parts to parts. I am a colorist. I love fabric. I love dyeing it. I love cutting it up. I work improvisationally. I freehand cut all elements. I believe I draw, am drawing, when I swing my arm using my rotary cutter. I think of my work as drawings. I also create monoprints and screen prints. In 1979, Paul Smith lo loved this piece and he put it in the front window of the American Craft Museum in New York City, and my career took off. And then uh, the catalog for my show at the American Craft Museum, covering work from 1989 to 1992. My solo show at the Renwick, which then went on to Germany, so the catalog is in both English and German. And then Wow, a change in my life. The year 2000, we basically opened up this wonderful teaching facility on our farm. What I would call a, an in-depth coursework in figure ground, classical figure ground composition, because what I saw in quilt making is that so many quilt makers did not understand it. So, little by little, I worked and worked, and because same, often the same students would be coming back, I could push them to a much higher level. When I said I was a tough teacher, I'm a tough teacher. So I taught people to draw, to with black fabric, to lay out their compositions on the wall. I kind of veered from, uh, I wouldn't say I ever do really spare work, uh, but to really complex work. I'm, I love complexity. And of course, I love color. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alliance, for all you've done. And, and um, thank you for, I mean, the other, the other, the four artists that, it's, I'm just overwhelmed with what you do. Um, I, I, this is kind of an emotional, um, day for me because I, uh, I used to play hooky in this building as a high schooler. <laughs> and and um, there's a language I believe in 
what we do, you know. I learned, you know, that involves the material in that language, almost an instinctive kind of intellect that that carries over with with craft materials. That's such an instinctive part of me forever, you know. And you know, I've always been interested in ritual, and I started making these mini kind of rituals out of aluminum and, and glass. I work with this kid here. He he got cancer. He just had a chemotherapy treatment, and then I, I do a lot of work with pediatric cancer. And we formed a team of kids that took over the art projects and made this collaboratively. So that was truly emotional and in, encyclopedic in 50 minutes. I mean the. The temporal quality of everyday life that we go by, we go by through it. My wife and I walk a lot. From one day to the next, our environment's changing. It's really changing. And we spend a lot of time, like you said, an inordinate amount of time to capture something that we're trying to communicate. The, the thing that I saw in all of our work is we play. We're players. Every last one of us. We're, we're set the stage. We're engaged in what we're doing. And it's, it's humor sometimes, but it's also the fun part of what uh, an artist's life is all about, is being there, being immersed in work, and being surprised by it. And I feel like that that's one of the greatest joys in making, is being surprised by your own work, and then being in love with the work like you've seen today. I mean, it's just, you know, great work is made by these five people. And, and I just feel like they're doing something that, that makes us related and connected because we're all sort of on a similar kind of walk or journey.